Good morning, everyone. I'm Laharika, and I'm working as an event organizer for Bhavanams. Thank you for joining us today. A very warm welcome to everyone present over here. Hope everyone is doing great and great there. So before we start our meet, I would like to share a few things about Bhavanams and its team. Bhavnam C2C, Bhavnam's Consultancy to Construction. Uh, we object to introduce students, community interest, experience and learning to enhance the skill list and opportunities for every deserved civil graduate to provide our clients with best possible world-class outcomes. We always carve for students for industry, making them experience an eager journey and a lasting desire for learning. Our services are structural analysis and design, structural drawings, bar bending schedule, quantity and cost estimation, design basis report, building planning, interior design, elevation design, 3D model walkthrough, and land survey, and whatnot. We, have, we are a pack of services. Coming to the hero behind this is Mr. Bhavnam Srinivas Reddy, sir, founder and CEO of Bhavnam C2C. Sir worked as, Sir served as an RCC design detailing engineer for central, state government, and private projects in Vishakapatnam. Sir also worked as an executive engineer for G plus 15 story high rise buildings in Vishakapatnam. Sir also worked as steel design and detailing engineer in Pune. Currently, Sir is working as a structural engineer in an MNC dealing with US projects. And Sir is a pro at AutoCAD, Revit, ETABS, Chad Pro, Safe, TNX Towers, Riza 3D, RCDC, Ever Bicord, MS Office, and whatnot. He's a pack of many skills. Uh, this is our architectural team and structural team. Our team is a skillful and generous team. Uh, architectural team, Mr. Ravi Prasad, sir, architect and surveyor in government of AP. Uh, Ms. Priya Nawal, ma'am, architect in Haryana. Ms. Pandana, ma'am, architect in Hyderabad. Ms. Ruchita, Ruchita ma'am, interior design in Pune. Coming to our structural team, Dr. Manik, sir, engineer research manager. Mahesh Surla, sir, MTech in structural dynamics, IIT Roorke. And he's a gold medalist in IIT Roorke. And Vikram Singh, sir, Senior Bridge Design Engineer at LNT. Mr. Ganesh, sir, Structural Engineer at KRB MTech. And this is our management team. Uh, Deepti, ma'am, Mayuri, ma'am, and this, that's me, Laharika, Veera Pratap, sir. And today's concept is concept of cable state bridge. Know why you see these kind of bridges everywhere nowadays. Moving forward, our honorable presenter today, Vikram Singh, sir. Good morning, sir. Coming to Sir Achievements, Sir is currently working as a bridge design engineer at LNT Constructions, Chennai. Sir is a Air 7431073-1141 ranker in the years of 2018-17-19. Sir also qualified in ESC preliminary exams 2019. It is our honor to have you here, Sir. Moving forward. Uh, we delighted to offer the most hospitable welcome we can. Over to you, Vikram, sir.
Sir, sorry, sir, you are, please, could you please uh, unmute yourself? Okay. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. I welcome you all for the Sunday morning. You are here and shows your dedication towards the learning because uh, most of the times what happens, people drink in the Saturday night and uh, go for sleep and bed for the Sunday morning itself. And uh, if you are today here, then I understand your eagerness to and willingness to learn about the civil engineering concepts. So today we are here again. So uh, we are going to discuss about the topic concept of cable state bridge. The concept means uh, why do we need this kind of bridges now? Uh, up to this present era, you say about uh, 2015 or before, uh, you would have seen this cable state bridge, not cable state bridge, uh, these how do I say, simply supported bridges, uh, whose span is 25 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter. And if some more reasons you have seen this arch bridges or the truss bridges whose span lies in the range of 40, 50 meter. But as the clearance requirement between the two pylons increase, we move top forward towards the either extra dose bridge or a cable split bridge. This cable split bridge is nothing um, but a big brother of extra dose bridge itself. So, <clears throat> I will tell you why do we see these kind of bridges nowadays and why these were not available in the past and uh, what may be the uh, anticipated future of these bridges in the uh, upcoming future. Okay. So let me share my screen and uh, please. Hello? Yes, sir. Just hold on, my computer is not responding. Just give me two minutes. Just give me two minutes, I'll join again. So, sorry, I first the students. Um, I hope my skin is visible to all of you. Yes, sir, it's visible too. <clears throat> okay. Uh, just a confirmation from you, Sail Harima. Uh, participants are on mute, all of them, or they can speak to me? Yes, sir, if they have any doubt, they can speak to you, sir. Yeah, because uh, I want the session interactive so the students or participants can ask the questions directly also. Yes, sir. We so, are open for interaction. Okay. So this is something about me, myself, Vikram Singh. Uh, I have completed my structures in unique MTech from IIT Kanpur. And currently I'm working as a senior business design engineer in LNT construction. So today's content we are going, what we are going to cover is what is a bridge? what are the kind of bridges we had in the ancient times and uh, how the force flow, this is a main concept for today, how the force flow in a cable steel bridge or a, in a simple cable bridge and uh, why do we need these kind of bridges and then we will have something about the course itself. Before that, there are some rules or usually ground rules for this presentation. If you have any query, uh, during the presentation, please note down the slide number so that you can ask the same at the end of presentation. Kindly sit in a mild stub or severe silent zone so that you can understand the concept with your full attention. If you have any query regarding this course, then that will be clarified at the end. And the one thing I have to make to all of you, please listen first. If you are going to read here in the slides, then you could have gone for the textbooks also. But uh, if you are here, then it means 
you could not understand the things which are written in the textbook. So please listen first. That is my humble request to all of you. And turn your cameras off so that you can see my video and the slides uh, so that whatever I'm presenting here, you can uh, see visually. Before that, uh, this is not my video. This is not uh, mm, any professional video. This is one of the video made by Honda. You all know what is Honda. So this is a kind of motivational video. I request that uh, please do not see who made it. Just see the content and audio, how they are representing. This song you can think of like a patriotic song. Just listen, just listen to the song in that way. It is just, I think, three minutes for 30 seconds video. And after that, we will start our session. And I will take approximately 30 minutes or 25 minutes to cover. And then we will have Q&A. So approximately we will finish by 12, 10 or 12, 15, okay? So just listen to, to this carefully. Actually, whenever I feel demotivated or whenever I feel that uh, I am unable to make something, I generally watch this video. So I will send the full link of this video. If you want to listen it clearly, you can listen it. Uh, I request uh, there is someone has left their mic unmute. Can you please turn it off? Okay. So let's start the topic. What is a bridge? In general, the bridging means the way of connecting the two places. Uh, although we are going to discuss about the cable straight bridge or uh, how do we have the flow of forces in the bridge, but uh, in general, you can take this suspension bridge for as of now. It is what? It just connects two places from one place to another so that people can walk from one location to another without uh, walking a lot. Some, somewhere, okay. A bridge is a structure. Uh, listen to this statement carefully. A bridge is a structure brought forward under construction to surpass an obstacle without affecting the properties of obstacle. See, if there is a river and you can just build a dam over it, just block the flow of water, you have affected the properties of the water flow. It's not a bridge. A bridge is a structure that affects the properties of the underneath uh, ground insignificantly. So cable straight bridge is a way to minimize the destruction to the property underneath of the bridge. A bridge is not necessary if the properties of the obstacles can be altered. If you can just create a wall in this water flowing canal, that is not a bridge. Bridge is just a structure without affecting the underneath properties. 
It provides the passage over an obstacles which were difficult or impossible to cross without a bridge. Okay. <clears throat> so in the ancient times, if I say uh, when we did not know what is a bridge, that time we had some kind of uh, the bridging, not a bridge structure, but a bridging which connected one place to another, either by connecting the uh, this branches of the trees, or we when we grew up, or the, when the humanity grew up, they constructed some uh, kind of they pull some ropes here, ropes here. They connect to two places. Then they thought, yes, we can connect the ropes along with the stretches. So they constructed this type of bridge. Then they thought, yeah, we have a strength of material. So they constructed this kind of bridges, which was which had a very lesser deflection. And uh, and when they know or something about the bridge, sorry, arch, then they constructed this this arch kind of bridge, which minimizes the forces. Okay. So the next topic of us, which is the main topic for today, that we are going to discuss, the flow of forces in a cable steel bridge. And uh, uh, subsequently, you may say, why do we need these kind of bridges nowadays? So let's understand the concept with the help of a suspension bridge. Then we will move towards a cable space, cable steel bridge. Okay. So just see this geometry here. There is a rope. I'm sorry, I don't have the real rope right now with me. You have hang a mask with it. Just see my video carefully, okay? Uh, I hope you all of you can see me. Just please confirm someone. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So just suppose, uh, just give me one minute. I will find something. Okay, I don't have anything. Just see this. This is my rope. I will connect with this. Please don't consider this and this. This is my just rope. I hang something from here. Suppose 5 kg from here. If this is hanging, this both of the cables will be in tension. Okay, sharing the equal masses. If this is suppose 10 kg, then 5 kg will be shared by this cable. 5 kg will be shared by this cable. But in case of bridge, we cannot support something on the sky. That this is my mass, this is my deck, and I will hang it to the open sky. I will carry the cable to the clouds and plug, tuck it there. It's not possible, right? So what happens? This is my cable. A mass is hang in between here. What I will do? I will stretch this cable. Okay. Just see one thing. The vertical component of the cable force is it's still the same because of the static equilibrium equations. You are just introducing one more horizontal force in this direction. What is happening? The net cable force is increasing. Okay. The vertical component is still the same. You are just increasing the horizontal component force of the cable. What does it mean? See this carefully. I will draw this diagram here. Not here. Uh, I will just take my whiteboard and represent some things here. Sorry, it is not. Okay. So see that things on a display. So suppose this is my rope. I have something hanging here. This is suppose 10 kg. So a 5 kg force is here and a 5 kg force is here. Now what I do, I am making this cable in this shape, in this shape. This mass is same, 10 kg. This will have a tension. This will have a tension. If I make the component of forces here, the vertical component is still the 5 kg. But we have a certain component of horizontal force also now. So suppose uh, I'm making this inclination as 30 degree. This is 30 degree. So this is 60 degree. And I can write, if I suppose this as T, then T cos 60 is my five. 
that t is 5 by cos 60 can someone please tell me the value uh, okay i want this session interactive as always so someone please take out your calculator and tell me the value here can someone please tell me the value here Yes. Anyone? Someone please tell me. Yes. Yeah. 5.77. 5.77 kg. Uh, please don't mind the units. You can change accordingly. I am just concerned about the magnitudes. How is it changing? So, the weight is 10 kg, but the force in this cable is shared by 5.77 kg here and 5.77 kg here. But what you have done, instead of carrying this cable vertically, you have inclined it. What is the advantage of inclination? Just see the thing here. So this is suppose my load here, or actually this is a bridge back. I am not drawing it completely so that you can understand how this force is transferring. <clears throat> so if I carry this cable here, this inclination is 30 degree. Now what I can do, I will construct a tower here. This is my tower. And now I can bring this cable to the ground and anchor it somewhere. So just see one thing. This is my cable and cable is made of metal and metal in general we use steel and we always know that the cost of a steel material is much higher with respect to the concrete material means if you could surpass this load through compression somewhere to the ground, this is my ground, if you could surpass this load or transfer this load directly to the ground in terms of compressive action, we could construct a concrete member here. That was very uh, cheap material with respect to steel. But uh, since you do not have the ground available, that's why you have to construct a steel structure. A steel structure does not mean directly here that uh, uh, you will use the steel for uh, sorry compression members also. Wherever we need the compression, we will introduce concrete. And wherever we need our tension, we will introduce the steel only. <clears throat> so a similar kind of cable will be surpassing here. So this is again a tower and this is cable inclined and we will anchor it here. But see one thing. This, all the cables are anchored somewhere. And if this is suspension brace, then a huge lot of tension is acting in this cable and we need a specific sorry a specific support location or a specific support strength which can anchor this much uh, resultant of forces acting in the cable it means what in case of suspension bridge, you need a specific location or you need to construct a specific location where you can anchor your cables. Okay. And uh, it is very costly to construct a suspension bridge because of a lot of because of the uh, requirement of a lot of steel material. So what do we do? If the span of the bridge is lesser, means it is not in terms of kilometer. 1 kilometer, 1.52 kilometers. If the span you can limit up to 600, 700, or 800 meter, then you can construct a cable steel bridge instead of a suspension bridge. Okay. So let's read out some of the statements, then you will go forward. <clears throat> Holding a cable and suspending a weight in the mid well, in the mid span, will lead to sagging of cable, as you can see in this image. To prevent the downward acceleration for the deformation of this row an equal and opposite force needs to be applied in the vertically upward direction since there are no supports available in the sky those cables need to be anchored at the ground itself and a tower 
the stable will need go downward then the tower is constructed for anchorage on the top and then the deflected cables are anchored at the ground in a suspension bridge the load is supported by the vertical hanger bar vertically upward and then this force is transferred to the uh, second cable or you can see the parabolic cable and that is anchored at a specific location one of those specific locations you can see here in this figure a huge concrete member structure is required to prevent these resultant forces in the cable okay now let's move forward so you can see the flow forces here the force is flowing from deck to this hanger bar then from the hanger bar it is flowing in the suspending cable then suspending cable to the support okay due to unavailability of the hard bearing strata below a bridge structure a water in a water carrying channel engineers utilize open sky what is mean by open sky you cannot just construct something below here like you will go deep below it will alter the properties of the water carrying channel that's why what we do we go up in the sky a normal cable stretch bridge has a tower height in the more than 50 meter in general if you don't go for a smaller cable stretch bridge so these tower uh, approximately have the height always less than 50 meter in generally these height lie in the range of 100 or 120 meter and if someone know about this iconic structure that is a golden sorry this is not cable stretch bridge this is a suspension bridge suspension this is also suspension here i'm sorry for the typing error suspension bridge if you know about this iconic structure then can someone tell me what is the tower tower height here if someone know about this anyone Okay, please don't Google it. I will tell you. Its height is approx two twenty seven meter. Just think, it's two twenty seven meter. In general, the height of one story is three point three three meter, approximately ten feet. I am taking. So now tell me the calculation. Ah, uh, two twenty seven by three point three three. What is the value here? Someone, please tell me now. Fifty-eight point one six. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Sixty-eight. Okay. Okay. Sixty-eight. Okay. So this tower is itself a sixty-eight story building. Do you think it is lesser? No. <laughs> so this uh, in a cable stretch bridge or suspension bridge, the tower height plays a most important role because the load is directly and transfer to the tower it does not transfer to the deck itself okay we will see some of that uh, content in the next slide <clears throat> although we are required to construct a foundation below substructure to transfer the, the loads but due to unavailability of the ground that load is lifted in the open sky and then it is transferred in tension not compression because if it is compression then you can use a concrete material but due to tension you have to use a steel material now and compression through towers and pylons we transfer this force as a tension in the cable and compression in the pylons uh, in general in this workshop or in this workshop i call the upper pylon or upper pier as a tower and below column i call as pylon okay If you don't know about this terminology, you can listen now. And uh, if you join the next upcoming workshops, you can uh, just remember it there. Okay. Okay. So due to excess material requirement for two sides of tension material, it becomes costly, hence not preferable if bearing strata is available easily. If you can construct. the foundation here then we never go for a suspension bridge or the cable stretch bridge because the cost of tensile materials is very huge now let's take it something forward towards the cable stretch bridge 
you have seen how the force flow in a suspension bridge and the same will be applied in a cable straight bridge. There is no specific support requirement in a cable straight bridge as there was in suspension bridges. We anchored the cable here. The support requirement is not needed in case of cable straight bridge. The anchoring cables can be carried to the opposite side of the, of the pylon through the inside of the tub. These cables can be carried to the opposite side of the to opposite to the pylon here and the same cable carried from here through the pylon and you can anchor it here. Okay. The tower of a cable straight bridge must be very stiff as the entire cable force is transferred to the tower as a compressive force here. Also, the deck is very flexible causing more forces to be carried through cable and tower only. We will discuss this point. Since the construction of a suspension bridge is very costly, therefore the cable steel bridge comes out to be the best suited option for bridge construction in case of long span requirement. Okay. Now let's see towards the second statement. What happens? Suppose this is my deck. I'm carrying or uh, this is my tower. There is a vehicle. I have anchored this to the tower and then I'm going to the opposite. <clears throat> Suppose I have applied a load of 100 kN here. This deck will deflect downward. If this deck is deflecting downward, just tell me what kind of force will come into picture in this cable. It is tension or compression. If this is deflecting downward, just tell me it is tension or compression in the cable if this deck is deflecting downward. Tension. Tension, sir. If this is tension, to balance the summation f x equal to zero, what kind of forces will be here in the deck? If this is tension, just balance the forces through summation f x equal to zero. What kind of forces will generate in this deck? It is tension or compression? Compression. Compression, sir. Compression. Just see the thing here. I'm just drawing this uh, deck again. This is my deck. This is my tower. I have anchored this cable here. The cable is when a vehicle load is acting on this deck, this cable is undergoing tension. This deck is undergoing compression. This deck is made of concrete material. And concrete is strong in compression, not in tension. And you are causing compression again in the deck with the help of anchoring cable. Do you think you are utilizing the material more and more? What do we do in the pre-stressing? We apply a compressive force, means we extend the cable so that a compressive force is applied in the concrete. And the same has been done with the help of the deck itself. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. The same is being done by the uh, anchoring cable. Don't you think that we are utilizing the concrete material more and more? This is the one of the major advantage of using this cable straight bridges. Okay, so yeah, this was about the flow forces and how do we need and when do we need the kind of cable straight bridge. Now just something, one more statement about why do we need a cable straight bridge. While designing a bridge over a deep valley, just see the figure. This is the depth of valley. Do you think you can construct one pier here, one pipe pier here, one here, one here and then carry your material with the help of crane to this location. Do you think it is possible? And that is even when the, when the depth of this valley is uh, approximately 120 meter. Do you think it is possible? Uh, actually it is not impossible but it is not economic actually. So what do we do? While designing a bridge over deep valley, a pylon may not be good option constructed at the mid of valley, which need 
huge material for construction and it will obstruct the flow of water in the valley if this is a um, in general the water flows in the deepest portion in general wind forces govern the design of bridges at these kind of locations in case of valleys the wind is a major factor and constructing a greater number of piers or pylons increase the resultant force in the structure number of pylons you construct here it will again increase the wind force and wind is a major governing factor so even a small change in the geometry may increase a huge and a lot more wind forces in such cases a cable straight bridge is constructed having a single main span connecting the two sides of the valley along with the approaches so you can see here up to here this is a cable straight bridge and this portion here this is called approach although this is not a part of condi right now but uh, a cable straight bridge is needed when you need a long span of the bridge we do not see this cable straight bridges for the metro because there you have the um, bearing strata available directly on the ground so it is not required in case of metro or small uh, small span bridges or the flyovers directly so yeah the at that time this is the feasible option so thank you very much just i will take uh your questions now so i will stop sharing my screen <clears throat> yeah if you have any doubt now you can uh, ask yeah thank you sir such a knowledge sharing webinar we have attendees if you have any queries you can ask sir uh just a small request to all of you that please don't write your questions in the chat uh, it is very hectic for me to see there and answer there you can ask orally directly okay okay if you are not uh, asking then i will share my screen again for 2 3 minutes and i will show you something so this is me and uh, we provide the cable straight bridge webinars uh, approximately every week till now we have covered only two the so one of them was con uh, conducted on the last uh, sunday and the second of the second webinar of that series is being conducted right now as of now we have conducted only two webinars one of them was uh, some open webinar you can ask your questions directly today we had uh, why do we see these kind of bridges everywhere because uh, we are utilizing the properties of the materials now <clears throat> in the past we did not had such huge strength material m60 m70 m80 m90 and uh, the steel we had a uh, 415 500 that time it was not possible to construct these kind of cable bridges suspension bridges especially in india although we uh, they have constructed in the forum but uh, in india this is going to be the as far i can anticipate it is going to the future of india now because uh, if you see uh, one of the questions just before i see in the chat uh, someone asking me that how many bridges i have worked till now <clears throat> i have not worked over the bridges you can consider that oh, sorry uh, i have not designed a lot many bridges i have not worked over tens or thousand or hundreds of the bridges till now i have worked over four bridges only four of them include uh, this nthl if you have listened something about it one uh, some things about the dogam cheru bridge which is in telangana i think hyderabad <laughs> the third was uh, the dubri fulwari bridge you have listened about the same bridge uh, which is being constructed in assam assam and meghalaya this is 19.3 km extra dose bridges which has a span length of 125 meters 
And the next I'm working on, um, this is a similar tender actually, not the project. Uh, so that span is 305 meters that we are thinking about to expand it to 320 meter. The main span of the bridge is 320 meter and that is going to be a cable straight bridge. So this is something. <clears throat> and then we have something, means I have something to tell you more. But uh, we are going to present a cable straight bridge advance. What is meant by advance here? We have already completed a quanta of bridge course intermediate. Intermediate includes some of the content like uh, introduction to dynamics, loads and combinations as per IRC. Uh, three of the lectures are from the MIDAS modeling, then lower pylon design, upper pylon design, seismic design, pushover analysis, and how do we use this seismic analysis uh, along with the push over analysis, then uh, basics of well foundation in the cable bridge, design of well curve, uh, well curve is the bottom most part of the well foundation, then well foundation, and especially there is one more topic that is, uh, you can see here, the strut and tie modeling. That is, this is, this topic is very new and uh, this is not known by, uh, I think, not known by every designer, it is very, uh, well researched and well known, but I have worked on this topic also. It's not a topic. I have designed a well foundation through this method. We have covered the seismic analysis along with the pushover. And believe me, these two, three topics are not known by everyone. Everyone means all the people who are working in the these kind of bridges or any kind of bridge department, not most of them know about these topics is pushover and STM, but we have covered in the syllabus so that you can feel like, yes, we are uh, equating our money, means what you have paid, you are receiving more than that. Then we have gone through the analysis of uh, well foundation, curve, uh, well cap, lower pylon, upper pylon, the superstructure, modeling, loading combination, dynamics, as much topic you need here. All of them are discussed here, okay? This course is given as 5,000 rupees. As you can see here, 4,999. This is the intermediate course, okay? Intermediate. This we have in the form of recorded sessions, means this is already conducted. <clears throat> now we are going to have a advanced course advanced course, uh, which is going to be live, live. For that, we are conducting a workshop. This you can see here. Uh, this is a three days workshop, 1.5 hours per day. And the fees for this is going to be 199. This workshop will be conducted in the next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, mostly in the evening time. And after this workshop, we will go for an advanced course. This advanced course, has some content uh, I'll tell you here, although it is not written. We will discuss uh, most of the things about the superstructure design here. Means if I say the modeling and the substructure is uh, taught in the intermediate course and the advanced course is designed basically or generally for the superstructure. Superstructure include, if I write it here, superstructure of the bridge has including the stack cable, anchoring system or anchorage system at deck and tower. Then we will have what is pre-stressing. Then what is tendon profile. Then we will have something about the pre-stress loss. And believe me, what you have studied about the pre-stress loss, that is even nothing less than basics. This pre-stress loss in the designing is much more important than you have studied in your bachelor's, okay? Then we will go about the concept of cable straight bridge. See, what we have covered today is about 
uh, even less than 10% of what we are going to discuss in this scalable state based concept in the advanced course about the uh, superstructure design. And then we will have something construction sequence. And this is a topic, the last one, which take me a lot of time and huge money to gather the site images and uh, methodology. I have paid a lot for this. So yeah, this course is going to be uh, eight lectures, two hours per lecture. So it is uh, about 16 or 17 hours total course because none of the lecture will be less than two hours. Uh, in general, this lecture duration lies in the two or 2.5 hours. This is the content for this advanced course. This we will start after the workshop. The fees for these two courses, we, I call these courses as point of bridge. So I will tell something here, this is bridge. Intermediate and advanced. I will write the numbers here, one and two. What is meant by these numbers? If you're interested in um, buying the sessions now, or in general, the fees for this one is 5,000. This is 25 hours because it is intermediate level, but advanced needs a lot of uh, teaching style also and the content collection also. That's why even if the duration is 16 or 17 hours, but the price for this is also 5,000 rupees. If you take any of the course now, you will get a flat discount of 1000 rupees, okay? If you buy any of these now, then you will have a discount of, you will get it for 4000 and you will get advance also at 4000. And if you join both one plus two, you can get both offers at 7,000 rupees only. <clears throat> so this is from my side. If anyone of you is interested about these courses, you can uh, contact the representative. I will give you the number or the contacting authority also. See, uh, why I'm telling you about these courses, I have already conducted this intermediate course already and I had an amazing response from the students. In fact, uh, I will tell you the two of the responses orally <clears throat> that one of them said that uh, we found here as much we could never expect. And one of them said that uh, uh, I gained more than 95% of the syllabus you have taught. Okay. <clears throat> so this is from my side. If you join the courses now, you will receive the link in the chat box also. You can contact there or connect with them. And uh, please uh, fill the feedback form also so that I can know uh, what kind of topic you need in the future and I will bring them uh, in the upcoming webinars also. So if you wish to buy the course, you can contact the, uh, I will share the number here or the, or the links for the courses also. Yeah, so that's all from my side. And if you have any questions, you can ask right now. Any kind of questions related to this cable study which you have, you can ask. Yeah, okay, Vikram sir, you are such a student-friendly teacher. We are so grateful to your generous and adamant personality. Attendees, you can find feedback form in the chat box. Please share your valuable feedback with us. We'll wait for two more minutes for your query session and wind up the session. If you have any query, you can ask. Don't worry. Hello. Yes. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, myself, Boshan here. I yes. had one question. Uh, the height of pylon, how it is mm -hmm. decided? I just had one question in this regard. Okay. 
So I'm sharing my screen again. Please confirm it is visible to you or not. Yes, it is. Okay. So suppose uh, I'm drawing a bridge here. These are my anchoring cables. The seamless geometry is here. Now, see, I will just change the pen here. See, see uh, if the span of the bridge is suppose 200 meter, 200 meter, this load can be lifted with the help of this cable at an angle of 45 degree. It's 45 is not constant. It can vary according to the requirement. Okay. <clears throat> so suppose this can vary. Uh, sorry, the span load of 200 meter can be lifted by a 45 degree uh, angle. So this tower height approximately, suppose this uh, mid span is now 100 meter. The last cable is anchored at 80 meter. So this tower height for the 45 degree needs to be 80 meter, okay? But if the span length is itself 500 meter, then for the 45 degree inclination, you need 250 meter. This cable stud bridge tower height is not directly decided with the geometry itself. For that, what we do, you will increase the tower height and decrease the uh, thickness of the slab or the depth. You will check what is your economy. Suppose this bridge now you can construct at 100 crore. But if you reduce the tower height here, I'm changing the pen. If you reduce this top, I'm drawing here. If you reduce the tower height and increase the thickness of this deck, okay? And you can construct the same bridge at 90 crore. You will not go for this 100 crore, right? You will not construct 80 meter and thin slab. You will construct a thick slab and a lower tower. So the tower height is dependent on economic uh, load transfer ratio. If you can save the money and still you can transfer the forces, you can go for uh, the lesser tower height also. But in generally, this tower height ranges in the range of uh, H equal to L by 3 to L by 4. And L is the main span length. Okay. So if your span is 500 meter, then your tower height in generally will vary between 500 by 3 and 4, 500 by 4, 166 to 125 meters. It is a thumb rule, not a specific requirement of thumb design. Okay. So one of the wires, suppose it breaks from one side, then it will have uh, force on one side of the column, uh, sorry, pylon. If the okay. wire huh? or the string is breaking from one side, hmm? let's say on right side, the string got broken, one or okay. two strings. So the okay. force will be transferred on the right, uh, left side. So do that check we do uh, to uh, for catastrophic condition that few of the strings have got broken and now the force is getting uh, transferred on the other side. For that condition, what we do, uh, suppose this is my one of the tower, these are the cables. In general, I will collaborate this thing or uh, make me tell you in a different way. We use FE550 in general, and we what we what the design strength we use is 550 um, by 1.15, that is 478 MPA, right? Yeah. But uh, this structural steel strength is gross ultimate tensile strength is 1860 MPA. And now what we do, we divide it by 1.15 multiply by 0.87 and bring it to, I think, 41407 MPA. 
please don't mind the magnitude. It is at a uh, yeah, yeah. calculation. Yeah. It will come approximately this much. Okay. Yeah. So instead of one factor, you are applying two factors. This is the one design thing. And second is, even if one of the cable fracture from its place, this power will still be able to carry out the forces. This is the design methodology for constructing any kind of uh, cable straight down. But only one cable, not you can allow that half of the cables are fractured. Only one cable is snapped. This can, this will still be intact because you are underestimating a lot of the strength of the cables. So that is the redundancy we have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question. Yes. If you have any question, please ask. Don't uh, stay there that uh, I will not ask, I will not uh, grow up in this class. No, it's a free webinar, uh, sorry, open webinar. It's open to all of you. You can ask any kind of queries you have. I think there are some questions in the... Yeah, you can see some of the uh, comments were in sent by my previous students uh, when we conduct this intermediate course. You can see some of the uh, comments made by the students. If you don't have any question, then we can bind up this lecture. Uh, the syllabus for this next upcoming advanced webinar, sorry, advanced course is given in the chat box and some of the previous intermediate course comments or the responses of the students are also given there. You can see them and if you don't have any questions, then we will bind up. And please fill up your feedback form and suggest if you want any kind of specific cable state webinars uh, from your side. I will try to incorporate them uh, on the next Sunday or next week, okay? Attendees, we are flexible to our needs please find a feedback form in the chat box. We can add whatever thing you want to share with the sir. And I would like to express my gratitude to all estimate attendees of the webinar for the presence and contribution to make the webinar a great success. And I extend my gratitude to our honorable guest, Vikram Singh sir, to take out time from his busy schedule to grace the event. So I think there are no more questions and we can bind up the uh, session. Yes, sir. On the behalf of Bhavanams, we thank you all for the patience that you have shown and involved. Thank you so much, Vikram Singh, sir. We are so grateful. We extend our gratitude. Okay, attendees. I hope everyone is clear with the topic we have shared now. If you have any queries, please reach out the server now. Or else if you feel anything else, uh, please fill the feedback form in the chat box. Yeah, yes, sir. I hope everyone is clear with that. Yeah. Let's meet at another great and knowledgeable webinar. Have a good day. I'm winding up the session too. Okay. Thank you. Th thank